live. Patrick, how are you? Good. Good. How are you? Good. My um, my video is a little laggy. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. The audio comes through even if the video is bad for me. I can I can hear you all right, but yeah, your video is is lagging. Um, mm -hmm. you can can you see me? Am I moving slowly? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, if it gets too bad, then maybe I'll just shut my camera off. But uh, yeah, let's yeah. try this. So how's it going? Tell me about what you're working on, Art and Ideas. Well, um, uh, Arts and Ideas has been a, a publishing company for um, a number of years. Um, started as a nonprofit, began as then okay. uh, a video uh, kind of community curation in the arts for about six years ago, and. Um, even before that, we were a, a micro site publisher for arts and ideas on the island. We li I live on Martha's Vineyard. So, yeah, okay. um, so, so for the last three years, we've published a magazine, always with the intention of of taking the learning and and giving it to other people. So we, that was a okay. for profit. Now we're actually uh, kind of moving back to a non profit model, and. The idea, I'm not sure if you took a look, if you take a look at artsandideas.co, you'll see our website, mm -hmm. give you an overview of, of what we're trying to do. The idea is that um, as we learned through our publishing initiatives here, um, every community is creative, um, but doesn't necessarily have the community conversation or the technical or publishing know-how to have that conversation. So what we're doing is working with um, organizations and cities to and others to help them publish their community, um, curate and publish their community arts and ideas. And then we're also publishing an international magazine. Um, digital magazine. Okay. Um, very much in the same platform that you're looking at there. Mm -hmm. So what I'm interested in doing is creating a community that enables um, people to see this photographer in Cairo and, yeah. and, that, and have that photographer in Cairo be directly funded by the community we create. So basically, yeah. I'm using publishing to enhance the capacity of a of a funding platform. Yes. That's just one piece of it. I mean, there's a couple of different reasons for it. One is I want to create a, a community of trust um, mm -hmm. to enable people to know that we're not just mm -hmm. publishing their content, but we're enabling them in some way. And then the other is to um, to build our community. So it enable our community to have a broader kind of loyalty and capacity by virtue of that community of trust. If you understand what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting the way you phrased it. Um, that the publishing enables the funding platform. Right. Rather than the other way around. Right. Right. That you're you're thinking of it primarily in terms of funding. And the publishing is an aspect of that, rather than, you know, a publishing platform. And oh, by the way, we're tacking on funding to that. Well, actually, people will come to the magazine because they care about place, arts, and ideas, and they'll mm -hmm. understand that as a. I fundamentally believe that art is a. It proposes a moment of democracy. It promote proposes a moment of justice. It, that there's an equal sharing that occurs at the moment of imagination. They'll come to it for that. So what are the mm -hmm. stories? So we're curating content from around the world. They'll come to it from, for that. But then they'll be. It's possible then by virtue of that, the people or community arriving as a result of that. So we're right now we're creating relationships with various media organizations and other artists around the world to enable this larger kind of context to occur. But once they arrive there and they see this person from Japan or this person from, or this, this dance troupe from Austria, it might be possible for them to be funded through this framework or this community. And it's, it's an idea that mm -hmm. 
that I I think all of the other funding platforms would inhibit. They they, they create a, a a bar of access that's a little too high in terms of the time of engagement. And I would rather have someone be able to say, "I'd like to fund that person." Yes. Click. And even if it's if it's uh, you know just mm -hmm. so for example in the next in the the inaugural digital issue we will um, there's a an Austrian dance troupe that's experimental but well established. Um, it'd be very interesting to have a little okay. campaign for them to enable them to be funded and drive them traffic, and then they could just with their Twitter account sign up and get a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time, and then that yeah. would be it. So that's the idea. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking through the projects you've got listed here. Rural North Carolina design build and new lives. Uh, useful local information, the research piece, global web magazine. Wrapping my head around it here. So I don't know how much you've looked at GitHub. The way GitHub works is it's ongoing sustainable funding. That's kind of its uh, core. Right. Right. I did look at it. So it's it's a patronage model, right? Right. So the idea is this is no strings attached money. So in a lot of ways, it's you know how the arts has been funded for you know for centuries. Right. Um, you know, and this is taking it taking it digital. So it's it's crowdsourced patronage, small weekly gifts that are aggregated. Um, you know, so as a, I as an artist, uh, I'm going to see you know a few hundred, a few thousand bucks a week um, from you know hundreds of different people, and I don't know exactly who it's coming from, but I see that this is sort of, you know, uh, this uh, steady stream of funding is what it's supposed to be, right? So there's, yeah, so that's a couple, uh, I guess I want to make sure that, um, that you know, it's, it's not always obvious to people when they look at GitHub, a couple of these twists, right, that, that I don't actually see who the people funding me are, um, and we do that to keep it as this no strings attached patronage model, right? right? And it's like, I don't, uh, you know, I don't have anybody, I don't have any, uh, you know, any sense that, well, um, you know, I'm going to change my work because of this person that's funding me, right? Um, we wanted it to be uh, very, very no strings attached in that regard. Um, that's great. But then also that it is a recurring sustainable thing, right? So when somebody sets up a gift on GitHub, a patronage, a, a tip on GitHub, um, you know, that's that's in perpetuity until they manually go and turn it off again. So it really is designed for, you know, not just, um, you know, not just the hype of, uh, of a campaign and how much can we raise in 30 days, right, um, and, and then what? Then what after that? The Internet's kind of geared towards that, um, and so GitHub is trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to mute that a little bit, right, and say, look, it's not just about a 30-day campaign. It's about, you know, the rest of my life. What, like, who's, like, you know, this, uh, it's not sustainable to just do it that way. So we're kind of, we're, we're exploring, I don't know, those, those are kind of the things we're exploring. And there's, I don't know, we might bring in other models someday, but that's kind of the basis of what we're doing. Um, Sure. Yeah, so I don't know. So where so where would you see a partnership or or, or how can how can GitHub help you? How can we help you? Um, well I guess the the challenge for me is is mm -hmm. really the preliminary challenge is this. Uh, mm -hmm. and I I did spend well while I was working for the last hour I turned on one of your YouTube your YouTube of your off site. And just to listen to you guys go at it for a little bit. I've looked at um, the communities and the groups um, mm -hmm. and see that patronage is a, is a bit of a um, is is an important component of it. I think the challenge for me is is just getting over the hump of of is this real and and then how does this work um, and and then a little bit more about. Um, your history since it's it's you've been at it for 24 or 30 36 months um, so I understand a bit more about it. if because if I'm if I'm building this into my I've had very good fortune of being a very well respected arts and ideas magazine on an island but as I grow yeah that respect and trust also has to grow with me 
So as I share this with with yeah. other people, it's important. Now that said, I'm I'm I wouldn't be calling you if I hadn't if I didn't have a certain amount of affinity. I'm not you know shotgunning this you know relationship yeah. with crowdfunding. Um, but it would be yeah. helpful for me to kind of build a little bit of a bridge toward you. Um, mm -hmm. Before I kind of yeah, jump fair. in both both feet, so how does a money thing work? Yeah. And in terms of, I know that you you've you've um, you have kind of a, a money and a Bitcoin and something in terms of exchange of money, but how does that work? And then tell me a little bit about how you got started with this, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, totally fair. Um, so everything happens in USD. Uh, so the Bitcoin thing is kind of around the edges right now. Um, but right now, all of the money that we're moving on GitHub itself is USD. And the way it works is that every Thursday, we go through all the list of the people on the site, and we charge people's credit cards. And that money goes into an escrow account. And then we shuffle it around inside of GitHub in that escrow, you know, and then and then we go through and we deposit to people's bank accounts. So if somebody has a bank account attached, then whatever they were given, you know, whatever the net is between their giving and their receiving, because everybody on GitHub is both potentially, both a giver and a receiver. Uh, we don't pre-sort people into here are the, uh, you know, here are the people that are receiving and here are the people that are giving. Um, so it does make it a little more complex to, to wrap your head around how the numbers work uh, each week. You know, but basically if I'm on there, then uh, uh, you know, yes, we're charging credit cards, shuffling the money, and then depositing it into bank accounts. So uh, that clears on Friday generally. It clears the next day. Um, we're pretty U.S.-centric right now. We're, we're, we've got some other facilities to – we've got some Band-Aid solutions for getting money outside the U.S., uh, and we can charge credit cards from any, you know, visas and MasterCards from anywhere in the world. Although people outside the U.S. are going to get hit with fees on that, so it's a, it's it's unfortunately a little bit U.S. centric right now, and we are working on that. Um, but yeah, so we do move money uh, every Thursday, and I don't know if you saw our charts. Maybe I can bring those up. I have, uh, I have seen them. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been around for 20 months, about right now. So we're coming up on two years. We're doubling every four or five months, and we've been doing that. We've done that three times so far. Uh, we're on track. I mean, I I expect at this point that we'll we'll double again by the middle of uh, by the middle of 2014 here. So we double every four or five months. Then in terms of dollar volume moved. So those are the main things we track: dollar volume that we move, and uh, and number of active users. Active user being somebody who either gives or receives or both on the site. So, you know, we we had a we had a blip, a minor mention in a blog on the New Yorker a week or two ago, and they the 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 comment was, "Gitip is sweetly idealistic but tiny," <laughs> was their was their take. Which, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with. Um, so we are kind of small right now, but we are growing. Like I say, we're doubling every four or five months. The big... So here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not just what we do. It's how we do it. Um, so get if we try and run the company. I, I'm the owner of the company. I run it as an open company, what I call an open company. I'm bringing this up here to just show you yeah. these numbers. Yeah. Uh, and you say you saw this already. Um, so I run it as openly as possible, which means that, well, okay, here's how I define it. We try and share as much as possible. We try and charge as little as possible. And then we've, uh, we've got this weird employment compensation setup where everything is funded on GitHub. GitHub is funded on GitHub. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any employees that I'm paying a salary to. I don't have any independent contractors, you know, that I'm paying by the hour. Um, I have an open source team that works with me, and then each week we split some of the money that's given to GitHub on GitHub. Right. So it's kind of yeah, that, that's that's kind of our play. Is we're trying to, I don't like the phrase "eat our own dog food," but something like that, right? We're right. trying to uh, to to really live this out, and if it's going to work for anybody. 
you know, if it's going to work for us, it's because it's going to work for everybody, right? Um, so I've been spending, uh, I, on these charts here, I'm showing you at week 31, that was the beginning of last year. And that's really when I started working on Get It full time in earnest and uh, building the team. So before that, it was kind of you know a side a side gig and and uh, showed some promise, um, but I wasn't really devoted full time to it. And since the beginning of last year, I've started building a team. So I've got um, I've got a team now that's working with me. We've got uh, we we had a retreat here in Pittsburgh at the beginning of the year. So last I guess two months ago. And we had about um, about a dozen people fly in for that, uh, it, mostly developers. And so now, what my project is this year is to bring uh, designers, visual designers, into the mix because we've come from this sort of strongly technical background in the open source world. Right. And so the big project this year is to is to really bring a design sensibility to get it to make it much more user friendly and uh, much more obvious how to use it and and just we want to make it a world class product right which it isn't quite today uh, but that's the direction we're headed so that's my big project that I'm working on right now with GitHub uh, for this year and you know like you can see on these charts we are growing and I expect to continue to grow uh, you know as we 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 make it not suck <laughs> As bad as it does now. Um, well, uh, can I, can I answer your questions? I mean, yeah, feedback some more questions. Can I interrupt you? Please. I, um, one of the challenges of eating your own dog food is being yeah. so close to it that you are the most critical of it. And I think that, yeah. from my perspective, yeah. if your philosophy is right, if your if your if your usefulness is right, yeah. Um, it can get you over the hump to usability. Okay. In other words, there's a certain kind of design threshold that you can get to. Now, there's there's a, a paradigm that I that I believe in that you should design from the start. So the design is not just how it looks and feels, but how it works. Mm -hmm. But I think that that the the framework that you're using has a um, in your offsite. You talk about you know um, the thing about Kickstarter as their storytelling medium. And I think that in some ways your your story right now is a bare framework of clarity. You you want to propose some transparent, open relationship in terms of transacting money that's not based upon, as you say, is vacuum. Right? I, I give you something and wait, or you give me something and I wait and you wait. I mean, there's this yeah. con context. I like that. So there's a story, the root story there that works. So, yeah. and I come from this change agent background, um, I'm a communicator and change agent, but I'm a designer and, I, and, and, and an editor and the relationship that I have to that is like, okay, how do I get past the trust factor to build in this? So when I've looked at 15 different crowdsourcing sites and judged them based upon their threshold of usability okay. and their threshold of relationship to me and yeah. I called you first and you gotten back and back. So the, the Thank you. There's something there that's, that's important that that, that 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 I know from my own relationship to the design end of things. Um, that it sometimes can actually overburden me. What's the story? So the your story is fairly clear. I think that the the challenge for me is yeah. is if you that, that the proof of the pudding is in the tasting, and so the relationship is how do you get people to taste. Yeah. Um, and with the New Yorker saying you're small, maybe that's a, maybe that's okay. The idea is, that are you are you is your effective? Kind of, are you able to do what you need to do? And so yeah. the question for me though is, mm -hmm. the way to taste this is to test it. And um, and so you know you you prove by tasting, and if does, if it doesn't work, then you say, Chad, thanks. But the the, f the framework for me is that um, I think my my need is this. I would like to be able to add value to my publishing experience by enabling people to know that they yeah. could be funded by being published in yeah. arts and ideas. Yeah, I would like to add and build value relative to my to my because I've never as a community curator I've reached out to people, and what I mean by community curator is that that 
my relationship to editorial, to design, to the who people I publish is what are their aspirations. And so if, if I understand and I'm engaged in their aspirations, or their, then I know their imagination and I can embed it within my editorial or my publishing. Yeah. So if by bringing in this transactional relationship, yeah. it, it's a little bit challenging for me, but it's possible. And I, and I think the idea, of, so from a technical perspective, of being able to put in some JS widget mm -hmm. that's maybe embedded into an iframe of some sort, I'm not sure exactly how this, my platform is going to work with this, because it, I've, I've done this with Drupal for a long time, so I kind of know that end of things, but okay. the, the challenge is how do I make it useful, how do I, how do I get people to know that they, they're fundable through this initiative? Yeah. So. Maybe it's there's a group, an arts and ideas group that that people can all kind of pile into, or maybe there's I don't know how this going to I don't know how that works. Um, maybe you can help me think that through. Well, the way that GitHub has grown to date is community by community, and if you look at GitHub, we have we link from the homepage, you know, or browse communities on GitHub. So we've got this concept of communities, and maybe this is what you're you're meaning when you say groups. Um, you know, these affinity groups, these people that identify with e with each other, and they're basically taking and making GitHub their own, right? So Drupal is actually a great example of this. Um, it was probably six months ago uh, when some folks in the Drupal community decided that GitHub was interesting and started talking about GitHub amongst themselves and started joining GitHub and funding each other on GitHub and then they created this Drupal community on GitHub and all joined that you know so really GitHub at that point is is this is, is a platform right it's a tool but it's really um, it, it's really the choice of this community to use it as something like they see they see in GitHub something that they can take seriously and trust uh, you know to use your word trust and 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 use right and GitHub is pretty hands-off at that point, you know, so we're trying to create tools. It's a little touchy because we do actually want to be sweetly idealistic and unabashedly optimistic, right? Like, we've got sort of a flavor uh, to, to what we're trying to do here. And it's, you know, we, we don't, like, GitHub doesn't want to just be PayPal, you know? GitHub doesn't want to just be this kind of, like, bare bones, you know, moving money kind of, uh, you know, mechanistic thing, it, it has sort of an atmosphere to it uh, that, that I think is important, has been important to its growth, and I think it's communities that resonate more or less with that kind of ethos uh, that take to the platform, right? Um, but, it, but it is, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's your decision and the decision of those you, you know, you associate with to, to use or not use GitHub. Um, well, I think we, that from... From my perspective, there's a couple of things. The, your your logo and your ethos are kind of coherent to me. Everything else is coherent to a techie. And, exactly. and, and I think that the data points and the way that you've presented language and information on the site is good for people who know that APIs work, that you can trust this thing, the security mm -hmm. is clear. Yeah. And it's just all it is is a matter of just kind of saying, hey, hey, this log in and put your stuff. This is easy. But other people need other reference points to feel okay. So okay. The, the, and as you I say, I know you're picking up on this and that design is important to you, but I think the the, the challenge for me is is twofold. I, I need to be able to make people feel okay and then help people do it. Yeah. So the and I'm not sure that, that with the tech crowd it can come and help people do a thing is pretty easily what makes people feel you know, to, so that you know what I'm saying? Is it that I'm Absolutely. I mean this is the thing I'm working on this year, right? Is trying to is trying to crack this. Let me let me uh, put a couple things on your radar if you haven't seen them. One is building GitHub.com. Um, there's a should be a link showing up in the sidebar of this Google Hangout. Um, and I'll bring it up on the screen share here too. So building GitHub.com. Let me back up. Go ahead and check that out while I dig up this other link. Where is this other one? one. Yeah. 
one of the pieces of feedback that we really tried to take on board at our uh, at our meeting at the, a couple couple months ago. And I didn't catch initially that you said that those were the videos you actually watched. So that was that was, that was an interesting place to dive in. You really uh, well, it's the place that that, that proves proves the thinking. And I, and I, if it's not there, then it's like a total guess game, guessing game. But yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you found it. I mean, because that's that's why we put that out there and bothered. So it's you're vindicating our decision to have recorded yeah. that. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm screen sharing something here, and I'll post the link over here. So this is a piece of feedback we got from somebody who tried to use our site and you know to to fund somebody and and approached. And this is his feedback saying, "Here's how bad an experience it was for me to try and fund somebody using your platform." Right. So here's like. Land on a profile page. Biggest text is how much they get rather than the gift. Doesn't look like a donation page, you know. And then he tells us every point here. Like this is where I would have given up the first time. This is where I would have given up the second time, right? Uh, so this is incredibly valuable feedback for us. This really surfaced at uh, at our at our retreat a couple months ago, and like the the whole redesign process that that we're embarked on right now is kind of a long way around to answering this, right? Because the bottom line is you're right. Like, you can't just sprinkle design on top. Design isn't something that you, like, swoop in at the end of a project and sprinkle on top, right? It has to be baked in from the beginning. It has to be part of our process and our and our company culture. Um, so the way I'm seeing it is to, to solve this problem, namely that the site is not easy to use and is not accessible for people who aren't really motivated early adopter techie types. Like to solve that, um, you know, is, uh, is, is a bigger project and that's what we're working on this year. Um, so then let me jump, you know, having laid that out, let me jump over to this building GitHipcom. So building GitHipcom is something that I launched uh, since January. So this is new in the past month or two. And, you know, it's, it's under construction. This is like what I'm so I'm spending more of my time. I don't actually get to write code for GitHub anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm working at this higher level now and trying to jump up to that higher level and manage it at this higher level, right? So just in the past week, these documents, uh, this audience document got written in the past week. Um, you know, so where we talk about who are we trying to reach and what are we trying to say to them, how are we segmenting the people that are coming in, Really, just trying to step back and think, uh, you know, bigger picture down, and then uh, then these brand guidelines too are new in the past week, right? Where we're again trying to look from the outside in, trying to gather ourselves and collect ourselves, and and figure out, you know, figure out what's the code we actually need to write, you know, and get a process in place where we've got a team that includes designers that are designing the thing and developers that are developing the thing working together. Um, so I don't know. I mean, this is, this no, this is, this is something your I, this, we're working on. This. No, just so you know, for I worked for an internet services company for a few years as a as a brand and user experience principal. So I led yeah. large companies through this whole process. What's your value proposition? Awesome. What are you trying to do right. now? How does that yeah. play out with technology? How does that map with with brand and and usability? And then how do you tell the designers how to do that stuff? So the the all of this is very familiar, and I've worked in identity for years prior to that. So the but the, the uh -huh. challenge, so it's, it's good to know that you're tackling this challenge. Um, yeah. It's good to know that the the framework for, for for doing that is 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 clear to you. And I just I sent you a, a, a medium article that was that yeah. I looked up this morning that might actually reaffirm a lot of the things that you've already gone through and you're struggling yeah. with this process. The thank you. The um the challenge is a couple of usability challenges that I see. For, um, one is one is kind of a branded experience relationship. How do I get users to kind of say, okay, this sounds great, I want to use it. Yeah. Once they get there, what do they do? The the other thing is is that you've got this JavaScript widget that enables someone to kind of click on and say, you know, and go to this, go to my spot. What does that do? So there's this point that's both on my site and on my publication and, and on yeah. your world that that I need to build a transparent bridge to. And so your design re framework really helped an awful lot. Um, so 
and then my I guess my question is, what's your timeline on that? How do you how do you when do you think you'll be? Um, I know how these things go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I mean, this is our big priority, right? It, like, this is my big project this year is is solving all these kinds of issues that we're sort of pointing to. Um, I I mean, it it's not going to be next week. Uh, no. If I don't have significant progress on this a year from now, then I've you know, then I've failed, then I've screwed up. Uh, I haven't done what I needed to do this year. Um, you know, it's also hard to say, you, you know, it also depends on your comfort levels and where you're coming from. I mean, I'm going to be working steadily on this all year. You can see where I'm at now. You know, you can poke around at the things I just linked you to and start to get a sense of where we're going. Um, you know, ultimately it's your call at what point get it's good enough, uh, you know, like... You know, how do we how do we define where there is? You know what what that what that looks like. Well, I, I don't I'm not sure. I think that there are two things. One is what's the branded experience for the entire GitHub experience? You know what mm -hmm. is what is the umbrella? And then mm -hmm. what is the you know the button for the umbrella? What's what is that moment that you actually engage in a transaction? Those two brand yeah, experiences yeah. can be completely different. One's transparent. One's like easy. The other is story. Yeah. That you know, it's like mm -hmm. great. These guys are awesome. They're like, you know, so so that they've got some scale by virtue of the way they tell their story. But the real the real ultimate thing is like that button has to work. So in some that ways, button. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable right. with the framework for the for the kind of like at what point is the tipping point between transparency and full umbrella, or you know, the the button and mm -hmm. the and and story build. I guess if you got if you got an idea, we won't be really rolling out our our magazine probably until our first magazine until June. I don't imagine that I'll be in, integrating an awful lot of this this um, transactional stuff in the first first magazine. We're working on a pilot, um, or we're starting to work on a pilot in a in a, a New England city. Um, I'll know more about that. It might roll out in in the fall. What I can imagine okay. is the, these small cities that have um, a deep relationship with their creativity. And yeah. for example, in Providence, Rhode Island, there's a there's a people are deeply committed to their creativity on this kind of it used to be kind of grunge rock level, and then this kind of informal arts level. But then there's this higher arts level too. That there's could be a really strong local community yeah. curation that could come about come about as a result of this this magazine. Yeah, so yeah. that's the kind of thing that I would like to have. Um, yeah. But if, and and I like I like the the, the garage. Let's get yeah. it done. Transactional relationship that you've got going. And I like the penny with the. With the heart in it, and, and I, I think your design, you know, framework of specking out the size of the heart is is funny. I mean, it's, you've got you've got chops. So I'm not I'm pretty confident. I guess the the question is finding scale for you and mm -hmm. enough enough to kind of sustain you and sustain me. But the yeah. but I'm you know it's like where do you envision that moment of the transaction being? The, what's the what's your vision for that moment of transaction. Yeah. What's, what's So the that? idea, here's where I want to go with it. Um, I want somebody to show up on artsandideas.co slash providence or whatever it is, providence.artsandideas.co and they're reading, you know, they're, they're, they're reading the content on there, right? And then at the end it says, all right, here's, you know, here, this was an article about, you know, about this artist or whatever, right? I'm just, I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth. I don't know exactly how you're doing No, no, no. That's right. That's good. You know, so then at the end, you know, so you basically actually got two parties in there, right? Or even three. One is the author of that article. You know, well, one would be, you know, the artist, right? Two is the author of the article about the artist. And then three is arts and ideas, uh, you know, the, the enabler of this whole thing, right? And all three of those, um, you know, so I don't know how we present it. Um, you, know, when, you know, presumably we emphasize the artist at that point. But let's so let, to simplify. Let's say the artist. So at the bottom of this, it's like you've made it this far. You're interested in this artist. You know, here's a button. Here's a widget, and it says, uh, you know, the, become a patron or whatever. 
like we find the right. language, and there's a button that says become a patron, you know, using Git or something like that, right? And so you click on this button, and then you get a pop-up on, you know, it's a modal window, so you're not leaving artsandideas.co, right? Like you're staying, the user is still on artsandideas.co, and the user has this dialog box that then says, um, you know, has a dollar amount, right? Like, become a patron, click. Comes up and then says, you know, $10 or whatever, right? And <clears throat> here's where we have to tease out a couple different things. Yeah. We want to make it, I think where we need to end up is we're going to need to allow these one-off transactions, which we don't do right now. GitIf is very much every week recurring only right now. Right. But in order to reach that wider audience, we're going to need to say, all right, so we're going to accept a $10 one-time transaction, and then, you know, if somebody already knows about GitIf, but we're talking about the case where somebody doesn't know about GitIf, and they, you know, they're there to patronize this artist whom they've learned about through Arts and Ideas Co. So they click and they do ten dollars, you know, and then we collect the, you know, a credit card and email address, and they're done, right? And then um, maybe they. So then what happens is they've done that, and they're 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 gone potentially, right? But maybe not. Maybe a month later, they come back and they're on Arts and Ideas Co. again, and they patronize a different artist, uh, and or maybe they patronize the same artist, right? And if they're patronizing the same artist, we can say, all right, you gave them ten dollars um, a month ago, you know, and now you want to give them another ten dollars. Would you rather just set up, you know, four dollars every week to this person or something? Like, just do the math. And so, you know. As, as they're spending more time and as they're showing more interest, it's kind of a light touch, right? It's a light touch to say, you know, uh, you're, you're giving one time to this person, but where we want to move you to is, a, you know, a sustainable, we want to introduce you to this whole get up thing that's behind all this, right? Um, that's really about this whole transformative change, you know, in the way that we uh, relate to each other economically, uh, but that's that's a very soft, uh, you know, transition into that. Well, um, I, just just riffing a little bit on what you're saying, I think yeah. that the modal, and I remember from my experience in terms of modality and, and security of transactions, I'm not sure how all that works nowadays, I think it's a, all of that has been solved, but, yeah. the, but the, the relationship to the user could be you know, patron one time, and and in that modality. And if you're a patron, you have you you set up a you know a, a fixed time, a month, two months, half year, year, and and yeah. and that and then you set your ten month ten dollars per week, you know, for a month or ten dollars mm -hmm. per week. But, yeah. but if you set it to the one time, it's 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 just a one time patronage, and um, the 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 challenge. For me, is is in order to create that relationship to that writer or that artist, I have to front load this experience and say, sign up, get it, put your, you know, go in and log in as if you're with your Twitter account and enable them to kind of link. I'm not sure exactly how that all works. So, so sorry, yeah, the the description, what I was just describing to you. Um, assumes that we're we're backing way off of that. So you're right, you're. Your your reader would not have to sign in with Twitter to create a Git GitHub account before they could give. Right? Like the idea is to make that much more streamlined, so it can be used in this just you know one-off way uh, without the heavy GitHub. You know, I'm creating a GitHub account that's going to have a, you know a new account. Right? Am I? Is that what you're asking about? Well, actually, I that's fine. Uh, but I was just if, if the if the painter or photographer or dancer is going yeah. to be funded and their mo the money that this person gives them is it would have to go directly to them. But the challenge, the challenge is that I, I mean I could I could manage this but I don't want to be a pass through for 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 other people because it creates all sorts of tax problems. I think the challenge would be that, that I I would I would cuz as a pass through then what is where is the money trail? As a nonprofit, it's, am I taking a, a percentage of that? You know, where does the IRS go? Okay, so the, the challenge is that I'd have to say, if you want to be funded through GitUp, which is a service that we're going, we're, we're offering, um, you'll need to go to GitUp and actually become a member of 
a group or an individual within. I'm not sure exactly how that works. So if, I see. If, so not so much the, the the patron's point of view, but from the the artist's point of view. Right. What's the experience for them? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the way that's worked to date is, you know, a couple of the folks um, that are really kind of leading the way on GitHub are writers, you know, and at the bottom of their blog, at the bottom of, uh, you know, whatever they write, they say, I don't get paid to write, I get, I'm funded on GitHub, and they link out to that. So it That's is... That's great. Uh, that, can you, do you have an example of that that I can yeah. see? Uh, yeah, Shanley and Ash are the two that are at the top of the receiver's leaderboard that we have right now. That will go away eventually, but it's there for now. Um, let me get you a link. I guess I'll screen share this. So if you go to... Come on, where am I going? Top receivers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like if you look at... I know Ash on her blog mentions her GitHub. So I'm bringing it up here to screen share. Right, so I'm going to look at Ash and Shanley. Uh, right, so if I go to her blog, ashdryden.com, uh, support my work. So she has something here. Donate, and then she also has a Get It button. But I'm looking for the bottom of her previous post. Maybe Shanley is something. So it's that kind of thing. So then, you know, then the question is, uh, you know, does arts and ideas want to make it easy for people, right? Like, do you want to make it easy for your authors and the artists that you feature? Like, do you want to have it built into your own site design? Say, like, and you know, uh, we just we tag this article with these, you know, get up user IDs or whatever, and then they show up on the page in this way or whatever. Right. Um, right. So I mean, that's that's. I think that's a, an, an excellent model, and, and honestly, I think that there are a couple of different threshold points that, in terms of scalability, I'm not sure whether mm -hmm. you've been kind of in touch with um, the night journalism, you know, the, the news challenge. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Sure. Um, yeah, button at the bottom. I have not talked to anybody from night. Well, I think the challenge would be to find the right interplay. So, I mean, it'd be, it'd be interesting, actually, for us. You and since I've, I've, years ago, after when I built my first um, Drupal site and uh -huh. um, and launched it, and then applied for a Night News Challenge grant, um, I didn't get funded, but I did get flown down to kind of share my story with them. Um, mm -hmm. It might be interesting to do a um, a, a little partnership as you kind of get it to the point where where we find this point of intersection between design and delivery. Um, so as maybe as I kind of build out my my mag my inaugural magazine um, and build this relationships with these these you know other publishers as well as for example tomorrow I'm talking with someone who is a director of the future of journalism and he's and a part of this matrix of how do you fund journalism, it might be an interesting way to, to build build this overlay that gives yeah. you, you know, a grant so that you can kind of exhale and get the design work done that you need to get done. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I... Yeah, we're working... Yeah. I, I mean, a couple of things there. We really... We're really trying to say GitHub is funded on GitHub, you know? Right, right, we're right. trying to avoid, like... I've talked to other people about grants or about other funding funding mechanisms, but it just feels to me like if GitHub can't be funded on GitHub, then what's it there for? You know, like it has to not just be a toy that you know is is kept afloat in these other ways. Like it needs to it needs to stand on its own. And I think I mean we're, we're getting there. You know, we're almost there. I'm basically living off of it myself right now, almost. And we've got there's a handful of people that are actually making a living on it right now. Um, 
you know, so so we're getting there. A couple more years, and I think it's going to be really. Uh, so what's your what's your tipping point in terms of? Mm -hmm. what, we're almost you, there. what you want and what you, when you think you need to have it. So two years. Two years has been my has been my goal that I've been my milestone that I've been working towards. And that's coming up in June. June of this year will be the two-year mark for GitHub. And when I started GitHub, I kind of looked around and I said, you know, all the things that are things were things by the time they were two years old, right? Like you look at Google, founded in 1998, and in the year 2000, it's not like Google was done growing, but they'd tipped, right? Like they, it was clear that you know it was it was going to happen. Same with Wikipedia. You know, Wikipedia, and then two years later, you're like, all right, Wikipedia's happening, right? Um, and whatever else, right? Bitcoin, I don't know. Hey, Chad, so, can you hold on just a second? Absolutely. Hold on just a second. We have a, a a cat who oh. goes in, comes out, goes in, comes out, goes in. Comes Got it. Out. Yeah. So well, I, I would, I would, to kind of, I would, I would love to um, experiment with you a little bit and to try to find out the best way of making that work. I, I'm not afraid of the, of the branding. I'm not. Um, I, I. You know, have confidence that it works. I haven't seen it or received or given anything through it. Yeah. Um, but I did link my Twitter account to it, have dropped and become a member of the arts group, you know, so or community. Thanks. All of those things do seem to be, you know, file. I've not linked a bank account to it. Yeah. So that's going to be a little bit. But I would like to. I, I think that there's a chance for, for us to find a way to benefit each other. Absolutely. And look, we have um, something you might be interested in, maybe not to get super involved, but just to, to stay in the loop. We've started doing a standing meeting, uh, kind of design-centric uh, standing meeting on Wednesdays. So Wednesday afternoon, so it'd be, uh, I think we do it at 1 o'clock our time on Wednesday afternoon. We've got a couple designers in the mix, and that's where we're really uh, moving, you know, pushing forward with this uh, with these questions. And so right now we're talking about these questions of, you know, what is the brand and what is the voice, and you know, what, how, how do we manage this design redesign project? Um, so if you didn't want to get involved in that, you know, that that'd be a chance to. Well, I, I I have a at this point I have a standing meeting every Wednesday at one. I'm kind of an editorial okay. assistant. Okay. So, but I, yeah. I, I like this, and I think that my experience could, could help. Um, I think that you guys, you're coming from a very open space engagement relationship with this, and and that's essential. But it also presents challenges when you're trying to create a project managed timeline relative to a certain objective. So there's some things exactly. that I think, there's some things yeah, we that don't I, do timelines really. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean that's fine. And, and the challenge the thing is that I could I can drop certain things into the mix that could at least allow the matrix or however you want to think about it, the fractal, whatever the form is that you use to get things done, to have yeah. some piece of knowledge that can, can so so mm -hmm. and I and I I mean I used to I was loosely kind of trained, I don't know whether it was trained, but I used the same framework that some kind of high end consulting companies would use. You know, what is it would you want to you, you what is it you really want to do? What is it that you definitely don't want to do? And then what are those yeah. things that fit in between and then and grab on to those as a kind of immediate plan. And allow the thing that you really want to do guide them. And I, so I, the that moment of transaction is such a key point, and that moment of branded transaction is such a key point. So the overlay of those two issues. Yeah. Anyway, I, I didn't I didn't think that I didn't know what I'd be able to share with you all of this, but I I'd be glad to contribute. I can think you can see from my design 
of that particular magazine that I that I kind of know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. And marrying that to uh, usability is stuff that I've I've you know led an 80 person team on. So I have some chops on how to kind of run mm -hmm. through this stuff. I don't know how you're working so and I've got a lot of stuff going on. My goal is to yeah. be able to by the end of the summer be able yeah, to say this is a transaction relationship between yeah. this patron and this artist or this patron and this writer. And then I can reach out. I can get I don't have this eat my own dog food thing that I that is that I do but I but my my relationship is mid mid Ju, mid July I yeah. uh, will be applying to the NEA for a, a grant to be able to have these pilots not just be presenting content but enabling other people to present their own templated content and then give them a chance to be funded within that environment that's beautiful that's that's you know so that's giving them their communicate community conversation around the arts and giving them sustained sustained relationship to the way they fund creativity I mean, one way to manage this is, you know, GitHub is all open source, right? Like, there's no reason that you couldn't bring your own team and, you know, even hire your own programmers and designers if you wanted to and show up and say, GitHub is close to what I need, but it really needs this and this, right? And then it's all open. So you, you could just hire your own people to work on it, make it what you want, and as long as, you know... As long as you recognize that you know the work that your team does is going to have to go through the same process as everything else we do. Yeah, I would. I would rather say this is what I need as a as a, a get it community member. Yeah. Um. And and get close. Yeah. Because I've I got mean, just to give you an example. Like so the core payment processing that we do is handled by a company called Balanced Payments. We outsource that, you know, to avoid. PCI compliance issues. It's just you know the much easier way to get started is to have somebody else do that. So they've been doing that. We have a very close relationship with them, and we're working on them with with them on a project right now where they're launching a feature on that their platform in integration with Coinbase, which is a Bitcoin wallet, right? So they've done a partnership with Coinbase, and they're like, hey, wouldn't that be cool if Gitip was one of our launch partners, right? Like we need one of our uh, sites to be using this. So they've got balanced engineers. Um, adding Coinbase integration to GitHub, right? And like working with our team, with the GitHub team, to do it. But they're using some of their bandwidth to improve GitHub in a way that is mutually beneficial, right? Like gets them something they need, but then GitHub benefits too. And the the way that, I mean, because GitHub is so open, those kind of uh, those kind of relationships are possible in a way that they are. Uh, but so do you yeah, do you I mean, anticipate saying by middle of the summer having a uh, end of the summer having some. How are you, what is? Do you have any pressure on this this year? Personal kind of like I really want to get this done by. Or is it this? This just. I mean, here's your, the thing. I have a lot of pressure, right? Like I work a lot on GitHub. The problem is I don't have. I don't have a coercive relationship with employees, you know? Like I don't I don't have any employees that I'm paying a salary for that I can say you're going to do this by this date, right? So it's it's a weird relationship because the people that are working on GitHub because I do have people working on GitHub with me, but they're working on GitHub of their own free will, right? So like so my not because uh, not because I'm paying a salary for them. Although they are taking some money from it, right? Like they're you know, I didn't even get into all this. Um, you know, but they there's 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 an economic incentive there, but I don't like I can't I, I I can't control when stuff's done because I don't control the people that are working on it. It's it's weird, and I actually no no no. no. It. I think years ago, just so just so you know, yeah. underlying all of this, years ago, I yeah. I am 25 years ago in California. Yeah, I was part of a an anarchist collective, and yeah. we an anarchist not in kind of like this kind of like destroy but anarchist as in distribute yeah, so yeah. I understand but the the, yeah. the framework for engaging people like me yeah is is not just an exchange of, of, of money and ex it's an exchange of time yeah in other words my timeline my time reality and your time reality have to sync yeah. up at a certain threshold of cultural reality in order for it to be Bio for me and for you. So at some point, that's going to be a 
a driving attribute in the relationship yeah. with people, unless you're just like tinkering. And well, uh, no, I mean this is happening. Like I'm, I'm doing stuff. I just can't promise when features are going to be done. I mean, I've got, I've got 450 open issues right now on GitHub. <laughs> you know, I've got, you know, 50 of those are prioritized. If that, you know, we have three priority tiers, and 50 of those are in the highest priority queue. You know, I've got a, I've got a support system I'm trying to build. You know, that I'm being crushed under the weight of right now. You know, I've got. Like, there's, you know how it goes. I mean, yes, no, time is the most precious commodity, right? Um, it, so I can imagine this, that it'd be. This is what I'm working on, right? You, What's that? I can imagine that it'd be, you know, six yeah. months before you've checked off a, a chunk of that, of that punch list that enables you to feel like you've got the functionality that you need to have a customer relationship that's. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm just guessing because I've been on Drupal, Drupal projects that have, yeah. you know, been project managed to death and they've lasted as long as, you know, a yeah. year just to kind of get things trucked out. But yeah. I don't, um, my, I guess I, I would love to be able to have the opportunity to say to an artist in Providence in yeah. September. Yeah. This is really easy, and I, that's I all. That's love, my, I would love to give you that. Yeah. You don't know how bad. That's the only thing I want to do. The only thing I want to do is give you that, right? Like every, uh, you know, yes, this is all I want to do. The trouble, what I'm, what I'm working with is, you know, this is the first time that I've managed a team. This is the first time that I've run anything, and also it's totally different than, you know, like as we were talking about the dynamics that I'm dealing with. So I know, you know, if it were just me doing this, I could tell you how long it would take me to do it, right? But I, I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm not, like I said, I'm not writing any code on GitHub anymore. You know, I, yeah. I'm just well, starting to learn Ken, how to work with the team. There's right? a, there's an, there's not just an ethos. There's a kind of a, I like, I liked your breakdown of C corp to B corp to Open corp. I like, I okay. like that framework. That, um, and I think that ultimately the relationship of collaborative imagination is embedded somewhere in the in the, yeah. the mechanism of your business model and I think that that's great I think that if yeah. you flip it, it the, the, the the context of, of collaborative imagination is where we're all having to go because the distribution of wealth which you're trying to deal with yeah. is 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 not equal so the, the so there's a there's an enorm enormously valuable cultural paradigm that you're engaged in that mm -hmm. I that at some point once if I get my plate clear it'd be great to yeah. do a story not yeah. just on Fun. get it but on on what it what it's what it's kind of flowering relationship to culture at large is that's interesting. Yes. Um, you just got to keep your eye on it. You uh, you know. Check in a month from now and see if, how much further along we've got. You You're gonna have to get your own sense of our Do you trajectory. post this design stuff? Uh, yeah, it's all. Those are all uh, done publicly, just like we're doing now. So they'll end up on the GitHub YouTube page. We also have um, something you might be interested in. I do a weekly newsletter. So every Monday morning, I send out a newsletter, and that's a kind of a snapshot of where we're at and what we're working on. So that could be a way to just keep your finger on the pulse uh, in a manageable way. Um, well, I'd like to. Yeah, and you're free like to, to. I do a lot on Twitter too, you know. So uh, Twitter is a great way I to. I followed you, so um, okay. I'll just keep track. And uh, and this it sounds good. I I'm. It's much. I'm glad we had a conversation. Glad you had time. Glad we had this conversation. Yeah, I good. think it's a lot a lot better than doing these these, you know. Yeah. Three thousand dollar videos that. End up costing you five thousand dollars. So right. the the you know the the value is there, and I appreciate. It. I'm glad that you glad we had this conversation. Um, oh, so now you got me fired up. Like I, this is what I want to do. I, like you are exactly the the person I want to serve with. Get it? You know, like yeah. We'll 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 get there. <laughs> Hopefully by September. <laughs> well, Chad, you're you're awesome. Where where are you in Pennsylvania? I'm in Pittsburgh. You're in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And actually, if I had it downstairs on my key ring, you're never going to believe that I did this accidentally, but I walked out of the uh, the carousel at Martha's Vineyard with one of those rings. Oh, you did? 
pocket. <laughs> and I, I swear that awesome. if, it, if, if I was stealing, it was subconscious. Uh, hey, but I have it on my key ring. My, my wife, my wife's lived here for 22 years. She heard you and she laughed in the background. So <laughs> it's totally cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where's the telling? Best ones? I don't know. Um, so the next know. next time you're here, you know, make sure you let us know. We've got we live in a big co-housing community. We have a a, okay. a big common house. You know, you and you and whoever you're with could. Yeah. Could uh, kind of put yourselves up in the in the common house for like twenty bucks a night. Thank you. That sounds awesome. I have a wife and four kids. Did I? Well, did four, I yeah, you, we have two rooms, so you could get two of you could okay. could stay in one, in one room and and the, the kids the, four kids. So the other four kids could. Be, I don't know how you work that out, but yeah. you're you know you're welcome yeah. to to drop us a line and let us know if yeah. you're coming. Thank you. Yeah, glad to meet you, Patrick. Yeah, Chad. I'll, I'll stay in touch. touch. Yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah. do. Thank Cheers. you. We'll see you. Bye. Bye.